Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another wiki slash documentation solution. I've been testing a few of these recently, mostly because my favorite documentation solution, Trillium Notes, is no longer supported by its developer. It was open source and free, and he decided his time was no longer worth continuing further development on it. So now I got to find an alternative. We released a wiki.js video. I've played around with Bookstack, and while I would not use it as a Wikipedia, as a knowledge base just to contain general information, it is very good at that. So let's walk through the install for that. It's basically going to be the same thing as wiki.js. We're going to be using a Debian container on Proxmox. We're also going to be using Docker to spin up the service and Docker Compose to get the infrastructure spun up. So we start this out by logging into our Proxmox host. If you look at my services here, you'll notice I already have a Bookstack instance running. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin up another one. What I like to use is a Debian template with Docker and Docker Compose already baked in. You can go back and you can watch my Wiki.js video to learn how to install Docker on a Linux container. But otherwise, we're just going to assume you already have Docker and Docker Compose spun up, and then we'll roll from there. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do, oh, it's a good number, 412. I call this Bookstack Lab. We'll make this a full clone. So we let that container template clone out, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Our container template is now done cloning out. I'm going to go ahead and change the IP something that's not already taken on my network. Come on, bro. There we go. And then we can start this container up. After that, we're going to want to go to Google and you want to search for Bookstack Docker Compose. So after you do a quick Bookstack Docker Compose, you'll scroll down and you'll notice it's about your fourth or fifth option down. You'll click installation, All right? And then you'll click Docker. You know, do, 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 do. run through this real quick and let's see here. And then from there, you click example compose stack and it'll open up this Docker compose for you. What you then want to do is copy the contents of this file and then log back into your new bookstack container. After that, you do a quick nano docker compose dot yaml and then we can paste the contents of our file there. For the purposes of this video, I am leaving these fields the default, but on your end, you're going to have to change the MySQL root password to something else. You can change the database name, the user, and the user password to something else as well. Uh, if you are exposing this service to the internet, either using like a reverse proxy or Cloudflare tunnels or something, please change this. Don't leave the default database creds there. Or do. Live life on the edge. Take risks. Who cares if your network info gets compromised? After that, you'll then want to go up and configure your Bookstack uh, container itself, right? So again, it's looking for the database host right here. It's looking for the database port right here. So if you change the database information at the end, so there are several portions to this Docker config file. The first portion is the Bookstack container itself. You'll notice it has an image, a container name, and some environment variables. You want to leave these the same, but you'll want to change your time zone. The app URL should be changed to the URL that you're going to be hitting this Bookstack instance in. So in my case, I would do 192.168.2.98. Or if you had a DNS record to resolve to this container, you'd set that DNS to something like Bookstack dot my domain dot com right in our case this is locally hosted so we are going to do it like that from there you want to configure the environment variables for your database so our database host is the MariaDB container we provided a port provided the username and password for the container this portion here you can change like if you wanted to change the folder that the container volume would live on, you would change this portion. And of course, if you want to change the port, which we are going to do. 
to 80 just for easier use and of course go back and change the port to 80 right there as well and then you also want to update your MariaDB root password the database itself the user and your user password after that you hit a quick save you clear the screen and then we do a quick docker compose up we let this run and we'll check back in in a few moments and we are back and the book stack container should be running how do we verify this well pretty straightforward we open a new web page and we should be able to go to 192.168.2.98 and look at that we now have a new default book stack instance but wait there's more that's the secret there's always more running one thing i would advise you do is log into the default admin account which is admin at admin.com with a password of password you then go to okay you then go to my account and then go ahead and change the email and admin name for this default account and something i'd also suggest you do is you go in and change the password as well so if you were to go to settings users click yourself you can see right here that you can reset the password so again either create a new admin account with the right creds or reset the default one with the right creds so everybody does not have access to your brain dump your brain membrane reading your mind as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe. If you have an opinion, leave a comment down below. Bye.